I think an interesting question almost nobody asks themselves, or at least if they ask themselves, they don't really research and come up with an intellectual answer, is the question of where should you live? You know, I was reading a book about Jeff Bezos <clears throat> and say what you want about him, but at some point in his business career early on, he decided he wanted to live in the most strategic place. So he said he did his research and he found, this is before Google, by the way, it's easier now, but he decided upon Seattle, Washington in the US because A, you know, he's an American, so he wanted to stay in America. B, there was no state taxes. C, there was a big pool of employees that he could draw from that already worked at Microsoft. He got down into nitty gritty details like how many flights there were coming into the airport, how many non-stops from around the world for business meetings. And while I probably wouldn't have picked that city, I do admire the fact that he looked into this deeply because I think three or four most important questions anybody's gonna ever ask themselves. I remember at age 16 being overwhelmed when I asked myself these questions. You know, it's like, what's your religion worldview gonna be? One, what diet are you gonna have? Diet slash lifestyle. Three, what career? And then four, like who you're gonna marry or have kids with. But that fifth one wasn't in my consciousness as much as it should be. And sadly, the school system hardly ever talks about this. But this fifth question of where you should live and base your life is in some ways, if not the most important, maybe it's second or third in that list. Because, and, and by the way, I've thought about this for years, so the point of today's episode is I'm gonna try to fast track and give you the answers in less than 20 minutes that I wish somebody had told me, you know. And I'm gonna throw out a few kind of frameworks you can use, and you pick the one you like. So an interesting framework is, where will you have the best social life? Okay, forget career for a second. Forget where's the healthiest place, because you can go down, we'll go down that framework too, right? So I, I think those are like the three best frameworks or where's gonna be the best social life. And, and by the way, you can just use the four pillars of the good life. If you haven't gone to fourpillars.com, you should be getting my four pillars uh, program, which is, you know, how to everything or the quickest answer to how to find health, wealth, love and happiness. So the first, you know, question you can say is where would be the healthiest place I could live? Second, where would be the wealthiest, a.k.a. career. Third is love, which is friends, family, romance. That's social. That's what I was talking about now. And then last one would be happiest. Okay, so let's start with that third pillar. Use the frame for framework of where would you be the most socially engaged? Friends, family, romance. Now, interestingly, the framework most people use is family, right? The average person, and it's been this way throughout history, lives pretty close to where the majority of their family lives. And I think that's valid to be clear, but the modern world is all complicated. There's something, if you've been listening to me for a while, talking about evolutionary psychology, my mentor, Dr. David Buss, you know, there's this thing called evolutionary mismatches, which means in some ways you could argue we were built to grow up around our family, right? But everything's been kind of chaotic for the last, call it 200 years, 300 years, industrial revolution, maybe even 400 years in terms of living near your family. I don't know that that's a totally valid way because family now spreads out and a lot of people don't have, you know, that traditional mom and dad. So. I think that's a good framework, but I think you gotta weigh the frameworks with multiple other frameworks, right? So most people go by family, but friends is a super valid one. And sometimes in the modern world, because of, I'm not gonna get into this, but 
you know, the collapse of the family in many ways, right? Um, going with the fr framework of friends makes a lot of sense, but I'm gonna go a little further, because like I said, social slash love, which is the third pillar and the four pillars of good life, romance. Go where your best romantic prospects are. You know, if you talk to a scientist like Dr. David Buss, he always tells me, Ty, everything is mating. Mating. <laughs> because ultimately, you know, we live on through our children. And so I think it's one of the most valid frameworks of deciding where you want to live is where do you think you have the best romantic prospects? Where are those people who are your type physically? Don't forget physical. Physical's valid. You know, our, our eyeballs are attracted to certain types of people. And now scientists are finding validity to that, you know, in this histio complex, meaning people who have opposite or complementary immune systems. So you don't have to discount your, lo your love of a certain physical type right so if you like blondes that may mean you know that on average those blondes have a complementary immune system and of course i'm oversimplifying a complicated subject but that's the point of this podcast is to get to the answers quick so don't think that relocating to an area that has people who look like the type you're attracted to okay you know i've always liked kind of scandinavia uh that look my mom told me as a little kid when i was like two years old i would like chase the blondes around <laughs> chase a little blonde when i was like two you know i would see a little blonde at two years old on the beach and go up to him and say hello so there's probably something to that you know genetically aka complementary immune systems and other things that we don't even understand now right so the next thing um so so that romantic framework also personalities like you know i lived in la la is a big city big market um but it attracts a certain type of person you know it's a lot of people who want to be influencers i always say every city has its good things and every city has its mental illness right <laughs> or prone to a certain illness and this is people who migrate not people who are born there obviously if you're born in a certain city although you could argue your parents were attracted there and genetic uh, most things are genetically heritable right so i always say la is narcissist <laughs> it's a narcissistic it attracts the narcissist i think a lot of nice people live in la um it's not the worst mental illness now narcissism some people would argue obviously if you have npd narcissism a narcissistic personality disorder which is the super extreme level of narcissism it's nasty but you know new york is greed um there's only two cities in the world with a trillion dollar plus economy for the city itself and one of those is new york and I've noticed there's a lot of good things about New York, but it, it attracts greedy. That's the mental illness. Hard working, you know, ambitious, but, um, you know, London attracts a certain type. Miami <laughs> for sure has its own. Miami's a little bit like Vegas, uh, but globally, you know, Scandinavia um, has a lot of what I would say is more mellow people. You know, the people who stay there and don't migrate out. People who migrate, Dr. Buss has done a lot of research of this in the Mediterranean islands. People who migrate tend to have higher testosterone, you know, more aggressive. But <clears throat> again, these are vast oversimplifications. But anyway, um, <clears throat> you know, Scandinavia, I think anxiety is higher in closed societies. You know, I noticed that in Scandinavia mormons in utah things like canada has a certain vibe so i think it's a really valid way to think about where you're going to locate because if you get this location right a lot of things fall into line easily okay and you know i think at the end of the day there's not going to be really anything you do more important than your mate 
who you have children with. Forget the romance for a second, but who you have children with matters and it's permanent in your lifetime and your children's lifetime. So, you know, people often ask about dating and marriage. Dating and marriage is not necessarily permanent. There's no actual, you know, living being between you until you have kids. So who you have kids with is really the defining moment of the next hundred to a thousand years of your lineage, right? So you, there's a principle in economics called thick markets. You need to live in a place with thick markets. Thick market means a lot of people of the type that you're interested in, okay? So it's, you could say, well, Ty, you know, every city has somebody who's my type. Even if I live in a city where not many people are my type, you know, well, that's a dangerous game, my friend. Because if you're in a thin market, this is an economic term, but it applies to many areas. If you're in thin markets, okay, the odds are against you. And I'll tell you one of the most important lessons I've learned in business and life be careful of thinking you're gonna skirt the odds. You know, be careful of going, oh, well, but you know, Ty, everything's gonna work out for me perfectly, no matter how I play the odds. That's not how it works, you know? It's not how it works. My stepdad was pretty religious. He used to say, trust God, but wear a seatbelt. He was just saying, play the odds. Don't try to say, well, I could make a whole bunch of bad decisions, but yes, you know. I'll be bailed out by God. That was his opinion. He might have a different one, right? So to the extent you can, you need to really think about cities um, through the lens of that social love aspect, friends, family, but don't forget romance. And, you know, honestly, if I had a choice, and this would be a tough choice, horrible choice, um, and I had to choose between a city that would have all my family, a city that have all my friends, and a city that would have, you know, the best romantic part, uh, uh, prospects, it would be tough. Let me put it to you that way. Some people think it's cut and dry, like family. You know, remember now in the modern world, especially if you become successful financially, you could fly in your family. You could fly in your friends. It's harder to fly in, especially when you're in the early dating stage, looking for a mate, you can, it's hard to fly everybody in. In fact, if somebody was gonna fly in before you ever met them, you know, they may be, <laughs> you may not wanna meet them because they're a little bit kooky. Uh, yeah, I mean, maybe not, but I've flown in some people before I've met them, but not really. It's kind of a strange, there's a whole nother podcast I can do about that concept. But what I would say is, you know, you need to be in thick markets with early prospects. So living in the right place romantically. Now, I wanna put a caveat. By the way, this episode, I'm just keeping short. I could talk about this, especially if we talk about the other frameworks, because there's, you know, this is the framework of love slash romance, using that to determine where you live. Um, but we could talk about, you know, the, trying to find the physically healthiest place in the world. You know, I've lived in Puerto Rico. That's like one of the healthiest places. Vitamin D, close to the equator, warm, just one of the healthiest places, you know. Career-wise, if you go down the wealth path, I've lived in a lot of the big cities, London, New York, Los Angeles. Those are great for your career, you know. And then right now we're talking about love. I don't think New York and LA are good for your romantic prospects. In fact, I think they're actually dangerous because there's a lot of prospects in terms of attractive people but they're not necessarily good for a mate we're talking specifically about a mate a mate i define i don't like to use the word marriage or dating or too ethereal and easy to confuse but i'm talking about having a child with somebody potentially so that's that's how i define mating in that context it's a, a romantic attachment between two people with the purpose of having a child Okay, so so I think, you know, this, this episode, I'm talking about the, the mating side, the love side. And, and I really think in some ways, if I was 18 years old, I'd probably guide myself with this framework over health, wealth. Now, happiness, 
is a tricky one and I won't talk too much about that in this episode, but you know, I kind of, my belief on the four pillars of good life, health, wealth, love, and happiness is that happiness falls into place when you get the other three right. When you're healthy physically, when you're financially independent slash wealthy, you don't have to be crazy wealthy, but financially independent. And when you have love, friends, family, romance, then I can now you can argue though, you know, happiness is, is, comes from, is its own extemporaneous attribute, which I think is valid. Um, in the sense that there are some places that I go have lived in the world that I'm super happy. I'll give you an example of my farm. I'm probably happiest in the mountains, you know? I've got some farms in different places. and um, But they're not necessarily the best for, you know, health. They're pretty good for health. But for wealth, career, they're not the best because they're kind of isolated areas. And for love, they're not there's not many people who live there. So, so there's an example, maybe you could argue that happiness, you know, picking a location on pure happiness, you'd often end up probably in the mountains of Switzerland or Colorado. But I, I don't know that I would, I would think about having a second home in those places. And by the way, theoretically, if you can afford it and build up your income, you can have four homes. I kind of have four locations now. Uh, so I actually now, but that takes a while to build up. You can't do that. I couldn't do that when I was 18. So you have a place where you're optimizing a city you live in. You're optimizing for physical health, a city for wealth career, a city for love, romance, you know, social, and then a, 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 a location for happiness. I kind of rotate now and now I have that. So like last week I was in New York. I don't live there permanently, but you know, like take, you know, there's a time in my life, I'll give you an example where I was like New York or LA for career. Puerto Rico would be for physical health, really healthy place. Um, for friend, love, friends, family, romance, Europe, and then happiness, my forms. But you still need kind of a primary place. So I think a primary place can be built around that love mating framework. Now, if you're already in love, have a spouse, you know, have a mate, have kids, then <clears throat> even then I would still stay with that framework because you want your kids to grow up in a place where it'll be good prospects. But I think, you know, then it's still the third pillar of good life, love. So maybe if mating, you've already done that, you still wanna live in a place where family and friends, you know, really friends are super important. It's interesting, like some Scandinavian countries like Denmark, the average person has this huge friend circle. And in Denmark, by the way, and Sweden, Finland, and Norway, Iceland, they're voted the happiest people in the world. And if you look, they really have the four pillars, health, wealth, love, happiness, right? So they have health, they're, they're the fittest people in the world, least amount of obesity, highest gym attendance, wealth. Sweden has five times the billionaires per capita of the United States. So you can just go to Wikipedia and see their list of billionaires divided by their population, right? Um, and you know love they have this huge social circles and then happy they they're voted happiest so the, the scandinavia is a pretty powerful place uh, and i've been coming to scandinavia when i a guy who was my doorman years ago drago mr x i used to call him said he was the best guy i've ever met with women he was a he always told me ty go to Scandinavia. <laughs> so I followed his advice many years ago, I'll be going back and forth. Um, anyway, I'll wrap up this episode because I'm doing my, the Million Dollar Body program. And I'm, it, it, for those of you not in Million Dollar Body, you should go, go to millionbody.com, millionbody.com. It's my in-depth uh, explanation and routine of what I did, I spent a million dollars over seven years trying every single health hack to get in shape, test my blood, add muscle, all that. But part of the daily routine for the millionbody.com is, uh, you know, recording while you do an 18 minute walk on the way to get some coffee or green tea. So I'm gonna wrap up here. 
Um, yeah, I'm kind of dividing everything that I'm teaching and over the years now into this framework of the four pillars and then you could go in depth into health, wealth, love, happiness. I'm trying to, like my life goal is to leave a complete system of everything, the all encompassing. It's kind of like they call it <laughs> in physics, they call it, you know, it's kind of like E equals MC squared. It was this, if you reduced the physical universe into one formula, you know, the grand theory of everything, that's what Einstein E equals MC squared. Obviously, I'm not trying to compare myself to Einstein, and <laughs> not as smart as him, but um, what I'm saying is, you know, what is the grand theory of everything? And that's my four pillars of the good life. So this podcast is part of that, um, and you can branch out into the areas that are most interesting to you, but it's pretty important. And I think the biggest tragedy in this world is that people aren't taught the four pillars, you know, the grand theory of life. Because what does it profit a man to gain one thing and lose the other, right? It's like, what does it profit you to gain all the wealth in the world, but you don't have health? If I trade you a billion dollars, but you'd have to be bedridden for the rest of your life, you wouldn't take the billion dollars. So there's an actual, forget Maslow's hierarchy of needs. There's actually a, a, a more simplistic, yet more profound hierarchy of needs, right? So four pillars is health, wealth, love, happiness. You gotta move towards all four of those. And that's the hard part about life is more, life's about juggling things, you know? I know billionaires and I, very few billionaires I'd actually exchange for their life, right? I know people have great physical health, and, but I wouldn't exchange for their life. So it's, a, it's, a, it's this exchange test. Anyway, we'll talk about that in another episode. All right, uh, leave a comment below on what, because I didn't get into all the details. I'll record a more detailed follow-up podcast. So if you could leave a comment below or review and then in the reviews, leave a comment of what you'd like me to talk about more on this subject of where you should base your life, where you should live.